Hi, this is the kid here at Red Gaming Tech. Um, I wanted to do a video today uh, on uh, an issue that's uh, quite controversial to say the least. Um, and uh, as Al Murray once put it when talking about uh, the Middle East, bear in mind Al Murray is a comedian, this is a serious comment where he was talking about the Middle East and he was saying that the situation there is so bad that just talking about it could make you worse. But I'm going to attempt to talk about it because it's something that I think affects me um, as somebody who works in the games industry and not just in, in a journalistic way. I have made and released games um, and it's kind of the career path I want to move into. And I think this is an issue that affects me and I want to talk about how it affects me, my opinions on it. And just to cover a couple of little things I know everyone's been talking about and give my opinion on it. Um which I may live to regret, but, you know, it's something that's been on my mind for a while and I wanted to kind of get my voice out about it, uh, even if I am a bit of a nobody in comparison to a lot of the people I'm talking about in this video. Um, so I wasn't really sure how to structure this because I, I tend to waffle and ramble and things like that, and I have done in a lot of past videos that I've done. Um, so what I've done is I'm going to structure it kind of, I'm going to sort of interview myself, for want of a better term. So I've got some questions for myself written down here. And uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about each one and uh, hopefully not uh, upset people because that's not really my intention. Uh, I just wanted to give a, a different perspective on this sort of thing. Um, and it it may not be the most popular perspective. I get that impression uh, in some places, but I'm a 25 year old straight white male. You know, I'm uh, the sort of person that's heavily overrepresented in games, but um you know, I thought maybe my opinion might be of some value to people, so I thought I'd just get it out there. So the first question I've written down for myself is, what worries you about the rise of political agendas in the games industry? Um, and what I mean by that is that it seems like within the last five years, um, and possibly longer, I mean, it's, I don't imagine this is a new thing, uh, it seems like politics has been on the rise in the games industry for better or worse um, and I'm talking about one particular type of politics and that is women's rights feminism men's rights uh, you know gender issues uh, even down to like race relations and things like that um, but the one that's kind of becoming a big topic at the moment is uh, gender issues uh, predominantly feminism and women's rights um, and I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing that people are using the medium of video games to raise points about these issues and to bring shed light on these issues and make people aware of them. I think that's a very good thing. I think um, if somebody wants to bring attention to an issue, I think uh, video games are a very, you know, viable means to do that. Um, but it worries me especially as a man that it seems like in some areas of the industry it's becoming quite aggressive and divisive and just be you know it, it's turning ugly <laughs> if one of a better term um so i think yeah i think that there is a place for politics and for you know um activism and you know re shedding light on serious you know real world issues in the games industry video games are more and more becoming an art form and i think that it's an, it's an essential part of the arts that they can be used to express real world issues and they can you know be used as a positive force where these issues exist but i think where it becomes a problem is where you get these kind of separatist or not really separatist i don't know if that's the right word but you get these kind of um, this kind of mentality forming of if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And, you know, if you don't actively come out in support of a particular thing, then you must be against it. And, you know, that's not always the case, but that's in a lot of cases now seems to be the uh, the tone I get from it. Uh, and I find that quite worrying because, you know, sometimes there will be an issue that I don't agree with for whatever reason and it doesn't mean that i think it like somebody will raise a point and i won't consider it in terms of my life experience that much of an issue in terms of how it affects me 
that doesn't mean I approve of said thing. For example, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. For example, if somebody uh, makes a game that represents uh, sexual violence on women, um, when I say represents it, I, I don't mean like a, a glorifies it, because obviously that would be ridiculous. Um, I'm talking about games where um, there might be a scene of violence on a woman or even sexual violence on a woman. Um, and I think the fact that it doesn't shock me doesn't mean I think rape is okay. I think rape is horrifying. But, you know, everyone is affected by the arts differently. And what I see in a video game, I I don't see as real you know it's it's that scene only exists for the purposes of a story um and i think that those kinds of scenes have a place in in games i think those sorts of scenes should be allowed to appear i don't think there, sh they sh there should be censorship because this is a scene of violence against a woman um as long as it is a part of the story and not just for gratification i think it, it sh that sort of thing should be allowed um and it might be controversial for me to say, but I think that in games there should be some degree of allowance for that kind of thing to be done gratuitously in certain certain circumstances. Um, I, you know, I think it is quite a, a difficult thing to deal with, but what I think the point I'm trying to make is that I don't believe that there should be um, censorship of what people want to put in a story because it's something that will upset people um, I think that you know any kind of art should have free reign to be upsetting as long as it's making a, a, a point um, but I may just be digging myself a big of course I'm not saying that like I, I like to see rape scenes and things like that obviously it's horrible um, but it doesn't shock me because it's not happening in real life i mean these are polygons and they, they represent people um but i don't find it as upsetting as if i was to read about that kind of thing happening in the news to a real person um but then that's just me and you know that's just my opinion on on the arts and how i think that the arts almost have a duty to be shocking in in some ways and i think that when people say like uh shoot down a game for saying oh well it you know it marginalizes women or it it has this rape scene or whatever um i don't think that's i think i find that frustrating because you know i think there is a need for that kind of thing to exist um and the next question i've written for myself is how do you worry that politics will affect you in the games industry um and i kind of i've kind of already touched on that um but I do worry that if I were to work full time in the games industry on the development side of things, um, from what I read about, you know, what's going on at uh, developer conventions and things like that nowadays, I would probably feel quite uncomfortable um, in a lot of those situations, places like PAX or, um, I don't know, wh whatever, <laughs> where you've got booths for indie developers and big developers all coming together. And it seems like every time one of these events happens, there'll be a panel on women's rights in the games industry. And it seems like every time one of these happens, nine times out of 10, it turns ugly. Um, and I have nothing against if, uh, I don't have nothing against someone if they want to host a panel on, you know, how women are represented in, in the games industry, either as characters or as actual people working in the industry. Um, I don't know if probably people want to have a panel like that. I think if people want to attend a panel like that and they want to discuss that, that's fine. But it always seems to spill over. And I don't think it, I, I don't want to lay blame on any one particular group, but it seems like any time that happens, it turns nasty. And then you have things like uh, a couple of years ago with the uh, Fulbright company when they gave up their spot, I believe it was at PAX, um, saying that you know they don't agree with what, the, the mentality and some of the things that the people who run PAX had said, I think they're within their rights to to not attend if they don't um, agree with the people who run the expo. Um, but at the same time, there is this part of me that 
just says you know it's you're there it's this is a business arrangement this isn't personal and you know i think well in the in the in the instance that i'm discussing there it was that the game was gone home and i think gone home uh, was a very good game that represented uh, lgbt issues and things like that but i think it was a little bit heavy-handed of them to refuse to appear at pax because it to me it kind of again i might piss people off by saying this but it kind of to me it kind of that their refusal came out as kind of a holier than thou type thing and you know i think that they should they should were completely within their rights to say i don't agree with what these people have said but when there were people who were attending that event who wanted to see this game and hear about it and things and they're saying we're not going to attend because we don't like what the organizers say it's almost like they're lumping in all the guests with the organizers like saying anyone who attends this uh, expo agrees with what these people have said when they don't i don't even know the people who run pax i couldn't tell you their names um i've only heard through third parties things that they've said and i don't agree with things that they've said um so i found i find it a little bit provocative when they say we're not attending this expo because we don't like the people running it to me yeah it comes out as this whole thing of so are you saying that people who do go do approve of what they say they, they never said that implicitly but that was kind of what i took from it and i you know it worries me that if i were to go into the games industry that you, there are times when you're walking on eggshells and people are sniping at each other and trying to you know it seems like people's political views sometimes get in the way of what this whole industry is about and this industry is about making video games um and i'm going to come on to the content of games a bit more in a moment but um you know i find that i often worry that you know it's almost like one bad bit of press you know you say something stupid or you're misquoted or you know you just some people just have controversial views and it seems like you know there's this danger constantly that if you slip up that you can be comp your career is over you know there are people who will destroy you um and it would be very public and it, you know it could ruin your life and, and it seems like it can be something as small as disagreeing with someone on something you know someone says i think this is a serious issue and you say um I personally i don't have an opinion on it or you know i don't wholly agree i think that it's less of an issue than you're making it in, ter in terms of games rather than real life and you know i think that thing that sort of thing can blow up very quickly and your name can be mud overnight and i've seen it happen to a lot of people and uh it does worry me that it, it could happen to me if i were to you know work in the industry and become successful in any way um so the next question i've written for myself is what is your opinion on the representation of women in games um well <laughs> i'm the sort of person who grew up with like duke nukem 3d and uh obviously the representation of women in that is ridiculous um so i should probably talk more about modern games and i think that women are underrepresented in games um as lead characters i mean sure i can sit here and reel off games that have female lead characters or where you can play as a female but i do find that games do tend to still in terms of their plots do tend to still be centered around male characters for the majority of the time when I mean, you've got mirror's edge tomb raider things like that all with strong female leads uh bayonetta for example but i think that women as a gender are underrepresented underrepresented as uh strong lead characters in games and i definitely think that's something that i would like to see addressed i would like to see uh more female lead characters in games um i'd like to see more diversity um in terms of how women in general are represented not just as lead characters i think that women do tend to be sexualized in a lot of games i mean going back to like duke nukem 3d or duke nukem forever even um the women are heavily sexualized in that but i think that i wouldn't consider those that those specific games but a particular problem because there is the understanding between the writers and the player that the game is ridiculous and you know you're not you're not supposed to like duke nukem he's supposed to be a twat and he's supposed to be just a horrible person and it's all part of the 
the comedy of the game is how over the top ridiculously just inappropriate the whole thing is and i think when it's intended in a way that's supposed to it's intended to make fun of the main character um i don't have an issue with it personally um where i would say i do have an issue is things like uh you get you see a lot of like fantasy games nowadays and like you know military games where you know men walk around in big suits of armor yet the women are walking around in a little more accounts to like a steel bikini um if you look at historical uh armor that women would have worn uh, a steel bikini would not have gotten them very far and um i think it does detract from the realism of the game and i think it that to me does qualify as uh gratuitous sexualization of these characters um you know if the men are going to wear what would be a logical suit of armor why aren't the women um i mean sure if you're going to have something like uh you're representing a real historical group that maybe weren't known for wearing heavy armor look at any historical group of female warriors none of them walked around half naked it just wouldn't have made any sense um so i think women are poorly represented in that sense um and i'd say that that's not something that's just unique to fantasy games i'd say it happens in most mostly like future military games say like mass effect for example um the men do tend to wear more practical clothing than the women the women tend to just run around in like what appears to be some kind of wetsuit um and yes i do find that gratuitous um but i don't consider it uh as severe as the overall underrepresentation of women in games i think it's an issue and it's something i would like to see changed but um as long as you're not representing that as the reality of women um i don't see it being a major issue uh it's something i would like to see changed but you know but then that's just my opinion i mean obviously there may be people who do find it very offensive and you know if that's something they want to discuss then you know more power to them um so the next question i've got is what is your opinion on feminist or women's rights activists in the games industry uh, and underneath it i've written uh i.e anita sarkeesian who's the kind of talk of the town at the moment um who's done a video series uh called damsels in distress about um how women are represented in video games and i'm gonna go on the record as saying i very i do not like anita sarkeesian so i don't watch her content i watched the initial video she put out and uh i didn't i found i personally felt that she was looking for problems where problems didn't exist and i'm not going to go into all the the points that people have made ad nauseum where she misrepresented something or um you know or she made something out to be something that it wasn't um if if i were to give an honest opinion i think she knew very well that she was misrepresenting things um and there were a lot of bizarre goings on like before she made the video she went came out in public and said i'm not a gamer i don't know that much about games yet when the video was released suddenly she was implying that she did play a lot of games and um i don't know i kind of got the whole impression that she somehow stood to gain from making this video because she knew that she could whip up a uh a, f- a fur- furor is that a word furor over this whole issue um and i think she she did make some valid points but i think she over exaggerated things to the point of ridiculousness at times uh, i mean the, the the most common example is the, the hitman thing where she says that the game rewards you for you know and lets you gratuitously beat up these strippers um the game does not reward you for being the game punishes you for beating up the strippers because they're innocent bystanders the game punishes is the game punishes you for harming anyone who isn't your target male or female um and the thing she's going she's alluding to with the damsel in distress thing is like the the early days of gaming the classic story like mario the plumber <laughs> saving the princess or a man saving a princess and a princess being someone that exists just to be rescued i think yeah that is kind of a valid point and that is still kind of a a a go-to story that happens a lot 
in games and i think it is a valid point that why is it always or why is it so often a princess that needs to be rescued or why is it so often a woman that needs to be rescued i'd say we're seeing less of that nowadays but that theme does still pop up um shadow of the colossus was a man trying to save a woman ultimately actually, I, won't, I won't give anyway any spoilers there because it's a very good story but it is at the core of it is a man rescuing a woman uh gears of war uh did eventually have female soldiers in it but you know again there was this plot thread of a man trying to rescue a woman um and you know i would like to see that formula uh, altered a bit and played with a bit more to make it a bit more modern because it is kind of a, an archaic uh plot device but i would say the fact that it's an archaic plot device doesn't make it inherently sexist um it's just a very old tried and true story um and i think in the early days games were a lot more aimed at men whereas now they've become a lot more diverse which i think is fantastic um but i would say the reason that people go back to that basic structure of saving a princess isn't because the princess is supposed to be feeble and like she sucks or whatever it's just a tried and true storyline that you can go to and it's just the, the simplest uh, form of motivation in the game is to rescue another person and because games have always been up until recent years when things have diversified quite a lot it was always a male-centric thing and so it made sense to have um your girlfriend or a princess as the the thing to be rescued um and i think it does it does look bad nowadays looking back at it but you have to consider these things as of their time and um it, it's in series that have been going for a long time it's kind of an ingrained thing in that in mario games generally you're rescuing peach or whatever uh but then in more recent mario games they've diversified and you can play as peach or you know it's not always just about rescuing someone it's more just rescuing the kingdom in general um but i do think she has a point but it seems like she takes this point that is fundamentally true and stretches it to try and find holes in everything even where holes don't necessarily exist um, and I think what made me really angry with her was in this video, she says she goes on this talk about how um, it's people who don't think they're susceptible to being influenced by these stories that are the most susceptible. And I think that's an idiotic statement to make. Um, I think that it's frankly stupid to say that, if pe that people who don't think they're being influenced are the ones who are being influenced it's like you know saying oh come on sheeple you know you're being brainwashed by these things and i think that's completely untrue and i think it doesn't give nearly enough credit to people's intelligence um you know uh take hitman for example you know uh say i, I don't think i actually ever did beat up the strippers um but say i had i do not believe for one second that would in any way make me more likely to treat women badly or influence my opinion on women at all and i think that uh, that statement was particularly offensive to me and i found it quite insulting actually um and i think that's what kind of soured me to her um i mean I'd, i've never met her as a person she might be a great person i don't know but her opinions and the way she the things she said in that video and the way that I personally feel she knew very well what she was doing and was trying to misrepresent things and misrepresent people I found offensive and uh, for that reason if I had a chance to meet her I probably would turn it down um, but you know she might be a cool person I don't know but her politics and that series of videos just really made me angry um, so I'm going to move on to uh, a different incident this is a more recent one and this is a, a huge one that is uh again going back to the al murray thing this is like the middle east this is talking about it could make it worse but i'm gonna attempt to talk about it and uh, this is kind of the most recent high profile uh clashing of women's rights feminists and other people in the games industry and you know this is this big thing that blew up was the infamous zoe quinn incident um so what essentially happened was that a guy uh, i'm not even sure whether he was in the games industry i think he may have been um had been dating uh zoe quinn for a while they had a relationship um 
And for whatever re- reason, the relationship went bad. Um, and there were allegations that she had been sleeping around and things like that. And for whatever re- reason, he decided to air their dirty laundry in public and, you know, publish all of this information. Um, now, I don't know Zoe Quinn. I don't know him. And I don't know the truth about what happened. Um, but I would say primarily um, the person I have the issue with is him. Um I think that, you know, if she was sleeping around and if she was doing all this, you know, all these things that he alleged she was doing, sure, that's not a particularly nice thing for her to do. You know, maybe she's a bit of a slut. I don't know. I can't say personally. But for him to go public with that, I think was deliberately uh, aggressive on his part. Not like physically aggressive, but deliberate. You know, I think that it was a very, very... Um, unseemly thing for him to do Um, if I'm dating a woman and I find out she's been cheating on me or whatever I don't even know whether she did he he says she did but you know I don't know them Um, the last thing I would do is go is make that public and vilify her in front of everyone and make you know spill poor me she's done this she's done this and you know, I don't think it, it's anyone's business, but his and hers, what happened to their relationship. It's none of my business. It's none of anyone else's business. So why he decided to make it or try and make it everyone else's business, I don't know. Um, and it was like this whole, he, he acted like he was exposing this whole conspiracy that she was sleeping with all these different people in, in exchange for reviews on her game. And these people had never reviewed her game and at the end of the day, maybe she did sleep around with a bunch of people at different games companies, but why is that my business? People can sleep with who they want. Um, and I think it reflects worse on him than it does on her. Um, and then things got nasty in a big way. Um, and this is why I personally find him more culpable. Um, is that inevitably certain online groups or made themselves involved, took it upon themselves to get involved. And, um, you know, maybe uh, it wouldn't have been particularly shocking for people to chuck some names at her and slag her off a bit because she'd done something that they personally wouldn't do. Um, That sort of thing happens. But what actually happened was absolutely gobsmacking uh you had death threats you had she had to leave her home because people were threatening her um and these are people that have never met her and don't even know what happened all we have is one person's uh view on it i mean she's later printed uh stories where she gives her side of the story and i don't but i don't believe his side of the story and i don't fully believe hers either but the point i'm trying to make is that i don't feel that this whole story should ever have been any of my business um, and I still consider it, I consider it still not to be any of my business. Um, and what I found the most shocking about that was that the guy who had been cheated on thought it was appropriate to essentially use the internet as his personal army because um, he must have known what would happen. Um, and you know, she was no angel from the sounds of it, but. You know, what happens between two people in a relationship, you know, shouldn't be my business. Um, You know, maybe she is a bit of a, you know, person who sleeps around or a bit of a strumpet or whatever. And, you know, maybe he was asking to be, maybe he was abusive. I don't know. You've only got their, you've only got his word against hers and her word against his. And at the end of the day, it's a complete non-story. It's a relationship that broke down and, you know, none of us know these two people, but... I did find it shocking that the extremes that people were going to in kind of, you know, I can understand people thinking, oh, she doesn't sound too nice or he doesn't sound too nice. It was, it, what I found shocking was the, the extremes that people responded to this with. Um, and I think that the, the culpable one for that is him, not her. Um, you know, surely, sh- sure, if she did sleep around, that would damage your reputation slightly among people that know you. But that sort of thing should never be made public. Um, especially when 
people have access to her in terms of they can message her or they can, you know, to such a degree because you're just inviting this sort of behavior to happen. And I feel like that was the sort of behavior that he wanted. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I think the whole thing was blown way out of proportion. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that that will just die off eventually because really it should, it should never have been news. <laughs> Nothing happened. It was the two people had a relationship, relationship went bad. For some reason, he decided to make it public. Um, so I'm just going to leave that story there, but that's kind of my opinion on what happened there. Um, so what I'm going to wrap up with, well, actually two things. What, first, quite, first one is, what is your opinion of representation of men in games? And I've already talked about this um, in, also in my, in my thing about what was the opinion on representation of women. Uh, my opinion on the representation of men in games uh, is pretty much as I'd stated before that I think that men are overrepresented um and I would like to see more fe- like lead female characters or prominent female characters so I mean when you go out in in the real world um you know in, in games it's like there's a way higher proportion of men than women within that world and you know if you go out in the real world you encounter about the same number of men as women in a given day um and i think i would like to see it in games so that you do encounter a more realistic spectrum of people um so in a given day you may encounter some gay people you may encounter some trans people um and even even in fantasy i think fantasy writers have a duty to represent humanity as it actually is as diverse um and that's not to say that games <laughs> have to be strictly 50-50 men and women. If your game is set in a situation where there are predominantly men, that's fine. Um, but I think that there needs to be equally games that look at situations where there are mostly women. And I feel like that part doesn't happen as much. And I do consider that kind of an issue. And I would like to see more games that focus on um, the sort of female world, if <laughs> you know, for example. Um and in terms of LGBT issues, um, I think that games is, games are a very, very good outlet for that kind of thing and a very, very good platform to raise those sorts of issues. Um, but I think the level of aggression and divisiveness that it tends to cause in the way that it's currently discussed is becoming an issue. And it is kind of aggravating people, getting people's backs up, pitting people against each other when um, I think there needs to be more of a focus on working with people rather than saying those people are the problem you know only the people who agree with this point of view are part of the solution um i think it's like um there was i think it might have been from a bond movie actually (laughs) there was a saying about the most important thing in any story isn't who what who what when or how but why um and i think that there's too much of say of people coming out and saying this is an issue this is an issue this is an issue but not saying this is why this is an issue and this is how we solve it. It's more playing the blame game and saying these these people who disagree with me are the reason this happens, but ultimately they're not. Um, well, they're not always anyway. Um, so I think that politics does have a place in the games industry, but I think it needs to be far less divisive. And I would say the key issue around this whole thing of feminism or women's rights or... Uh, LGBT issues and things like that Um, I would say the issue isn't that they're being discussed it's the way that they're being discussed Um, and I think the level of aggression uh, and this aggression exists on both sides and this level of uh, almost like tribalism forming is becoming a big issue and it's tearing the gaming community apart and it's tearing the industry apart because people are treading on eggshells because they're afraid to upset each other and I think that a lot of the time when someone does upset someone else in the games industry, it wasn't always intentional. Um, and I think that there needs to be a focus on educating people on why people are upset with what they've said or their opinion rather than kind of shunning them and saying and lumping people together. And, you know, that's what I think is the, the core issue here. Uh, I've been waffling for about half an hour now, so I'm going to wrap this up. Um, so, yeah, this has just been a little talk about 
you know, what I think about gender issues, LGBT issues in games, whether I think they have a place. Um, and I hope it's kind of given a different insight into it from someone who isn't deep in the games industry. I'm kind of very much on the fringe of it. Um, and just as a, you know, a man's point of view, as a man who's 25, you know, pretty much just like standard white male, um, who is offered and around a lot of women, a lot of people of different sexual orientations. I, you know, trans people, I see people like that all the time. I mean, I work in a pub. Of course, you're going to encounter people like that all the time. I have friends in all different walks of lives. And, you know, I thought maybe, you know, it might be different to get my perspective on it. Maybe you don't care. I don't know. But I just wanted to get all this off my chest. Um, so if you've got any questions for me, just post it in the comments and uh, I'll try and answer you as best as I can. Um, I will be with um, Amata and possibly Crimson. I'm not sure whether Crimson's going to be there at uh, London Comic Con uh, in next weekend, in fact. Um, so I just realized that none of you know what I look like. But you might recognize Amata or Crimson and I will probably be with them uh, for a decent amount of time. So if you want to chat with me about anything, just come up and chat with me you know i'm a very personable person um uh, see if you bump into me say hi um but until then uh yeah anything you want to add just post it in the comments any questions you have or you can get hold of me on the facebook page or our main site uh but yeah i've been the kid here at red gaming tech thanks for listening to my half hour long ramble and uh i will see you all next time <laughs>